Hello everyone, my name is Blackwatch and welcome to another episode of How To Play and this week we're going to be talking about Mike Baker, also known as Thatcher. Just quickly, if you like the videos and you like these guides and you want to see more, subscribe, like, share, do whatever you want to do. But if you want to check out some other guides, we've got stuff from previous weeks, I'm going through every operator from the original guys all the way through to the new DLC folk in order, week on week. Let's do this. Thatcher is basically... If Thermite's the key to the Gates of Victory, then Thatcher's the wings that flew you to the Gates of Victory. He's a two-armor, two-speed attacker. He's a member of the SAS, which is the UK's pride and joy when it comes to counter-terrorism operations. And he has access to three primary weapons, unlike most of the SAS people. M590A1 shotgun. This is a good shotgun. Don't use it in competitive play. L85A2 assault rifle. Good for Thermite players. Medium rate of fire. Pretty reasonable recoil and access to a two-time scope. AR-33, other assault rifle, good for Flores players, fast rate of fire, lower mag capacity, 25 plus 1 instead of 30 plus 1 on the L85, but reasonable recoil, and it has access to not only the 1.5x, which is one of my favourite sights in the game, but also an angled grip. This one comes down to a bit of a preference choice. Personally, I'd say look at the map for engagement ranges and choose depending on that, i.e. shorter engagement ranges go with the angled grip in the 1.5x, Longer engagement ranges go for the L85 and the 2X. You're getting more damage with the L85 per shot. You're getting a higher rate of fire with the AR-33. So those are your kind of characteristics. And just choose whatever you prefer. But I tend to lean more towards the L85 because it's going to use more often. I play Sledge a lot and that is his primary weapon. So it's just a case of my preference over time. Secondary weapon is a P226. It's perfectly fine. Nothing to really say about it, you're stuck with it anyway. It's a high capacity, low damage pistol, and it does the job. Secondary gadget, claymore and breaching charges. Personally, I would go for the claymore because it means that you can cover runouts on external breaches when you're working with your thermite. But it's a case of looking at the site, looking at your team composition and making that choice based on that information. One of the things I would say is that sometimes it's better to just do the job yourself with the claymore in your pocket rather than pulling one of your teammates away, taking up 30 seconds, whatever, of their round when they could be off doing their own thing. His unique gadget is the EG Mark Zero EMP grenade, and he has three of these. 5.2 meter radius with a three second fuse. That fuse activates the moment he chucks that bad boy out of his hand and it works through all surfaces, there's nothing that blocks the EMP as such, it's just a flat 5.2 meter radius penetrating all surfaces and what it does is it disables all electronic defender gadgets for 10 seconds and the only thing that can counter this is if he's either got his gadget caught by Wamai or Jaeger in which case Wamai will pull it away and Jaeger will outright destroy it the only other thing is that if a gadget's been disabled, the operator who has had their gadget disabled can pick that back up and then replace it. The replaced gadget will immediately have the EMP wiped, but obviously it's quite a lengthy animation on both sides of that coin. So it's effectively 10 seconds of defender gadget turn offness, and your main purpose for using this is for clearing breach denial on walls. And I say clearing, you can't really do that anymore because it used to destroy, now it just disables. It also disables all one times defender optical sights, so I'm talking about your reflex, your holographics, turns them off so you have no reticle through those as a defender for 15 seconds and it also disables your laser sight. so if you're a guy who likes using shotguns with a laser sight for that tight hip fire accuracy, you're going to be missing out on that hip fire accuracy bonus for 15 seconds after you get slapped with an EMP. That's your strengths and there are not too many because they're fairly indisputably strong are the fact that he's the easiest and most consistent anti-electronic operator in the game bar none. He's the undisputed king of wall clear because he's the only one of those wall clear operators who has no clear downside. Twitch is on her way to getting that because she now has infinite range on her laser and that's a really good thing and it's going to be used by people once they start to catch on to it. She is crazy, she's been slept on massively but Thatcher is just your poster boy for do the job well, do it easily, and do it without any fuss. He has a good selection of weapons, and he's very rarely not useful. You're going to find that as long as you're playing ranked, you're not going to find matches with no breach denial or no electronic gadgets. 
only tends to be in your casuals that you find stuff like that. The reason that he has no downsides is really because, not so much because he has no downsides himself, he does have some downsides, but his downsides pale in comparison to the downsides of his competitors, or his main competitor, Kali. Sniper rifles don't work in Siege, and our secondary doesn't justify it enough. So, yeah. In terms of his weaknesses, you're never going to bloody play him, because he's always banned. So there you go, that's his number one weakness. He's never here. He's always on holiday, because nobody wants to play with him. Ubisoft, just this is, you know, man-to-man, -man, one on one situation here. You're not going to fix the Thatcher banning situation by nerfing Thatcher more. You're only going to fix it by buffing his competitors. Stop taking the downward approach to balancing. Make other people better. Don't make the good people worse. Unless it's necessary. But it's not necessary in this case. Thatcher's a very balanced guy. You never get to play him. When you do get to play him, there's one thing I'd say. He does have a bit of an awkward interaction with the Banshees. And that when you disable a Banshee, it doesn't open it up and make it destroyable. It actually keeps it locked. So for a period of time, you're forced to not be able to destroy that thing unless you have explosives. And it's a bit awkward because if you turn it off and then push in on site, and this applies to a few other things, his other uh, negative is that if you push in and you've had the things disabled, obviously disabled, not destroyed, it means that after those 10 seconds, those gadgets are going to reactivate, whether it's a proxy alarm, whether it's a banshee. And if you've not managed to push all the way in past those things that you've disabled, you're then going to have to deal with them again, and that puts you back to square one. So, he's not a permanent solution to gadgets, but he is still the guy to pick, 9 times out of 10. Tips and tricks of Thatcher, really basic ones. This is not a complicated operator, but he is a good operator. Get your job done straight away, absolute number one priority. You dying early can literally lose rounds for your team. You're one of the most, if not the most important operator on your team, do not die. Be careful, get your job done quickly, try and take the fastest but also the safest route to the thing that you need to breach. Now identify where that is first of all in the prep phase and then change your spawn so that you're in a place that is relatively safe and that has quite a short path to the area that you need to be in to get your job done and encourage your thermite or whoever your hard breacher is to do the same. Let your non-essential teammates on that spawn go first. You can afford to live with a dead ash. I know they're a top 500 fragger in the EU. It's going to be a heartbreaking memorial service for them. But damn them anyway. You're the important one in this situation. So watch your own ass and not theirs. Or you can watch their ass, but you will be watching it as they get drilled by someone in the head from long distance whilst you stand there quite happy to keep your EMPs nice and toasty in your pockets. If there's no breach denial, which hopefully shouldn't happen because you want an ideal situation where you always get breach denial so finding clips for your how to play guide online is very easy, then you'll want to go out there and actually support your team with pushes. Now one of the things I like to do is scrub entries. This is where you chuck an EMP at a door frame or the side of a breach and basically clear out anything that could be making that entry nasty for your team or for yourself. So I'm talking your gushmot mines, goos, cap cans, all that stuff gets disabled by an EMP at the doorway. If you've got them there anyway, it makes no sense for you to be pushing or for you to allow your teammates who are nearby to push into those areas without hitting them with an EMP first, because your job is either done or your job is not required, in which case you need to change your job. Adaptability is the reason we survive. And the last thing is related to the previous tip in terms of scrubbing entries. Don't throw your EMPs into doorways if you know that Jaeger or Wamai are there. If you can hear an ADS purring at the side of the door, don't be one of those guys that just throws it in and goes, <gasps> What happened? It's gone! Because you knew it was there. Throw it at the side of the doorway. And all of a sudden, the gadget's been taken care of, and your gadget is nicely dispensed. In the positive sense, because it did its job. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoy Thatcher, I hope you enjoy your time in this guide, and I hope that this has given you some tips, some tricks, a bit of help to attack him.
as best you possibly can. My back is killing me. I'm going to bed. Dosvidanya, everybody. Bye-bye.